Hey guys, Chris here with PNW Bruce. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the first video of hopefully many to come. Uh, I wanted to start off, that'd be a good idea for the first video, just kind of go over uh, my basic homebrew setup right now. Um, so I'm currently set up to do five ground batches of all grain. Um, so I guess we'll start out with the boil pot here. So I went with the stainless 10 and a half gallon uh, boil pot, which is uh, a little more expensive, but it's nice to have the extra extra space. Um, your boil volumes are usually going to be around seven gallons or so, and having that extra room um, to help boil overs and stuff is just a nice peace of mind. Um, the other kettle I got is just a five gallon. Uh, this is mainly for heating up strike and sparge water. Um, so five gallons seems to be a perfect amount for that. Uh, as far as stir stick, um, just your basic, just your basic spoon. Nothing fancy about that. Um, the mash tun. Um, I built my own. Got the cooler from Home Depot. Um, and I got the equipment from my local homebrew store. Uh, set it up with the false bottom. Uh, actually, it was super easy to do. Um, so I think all in all, it probably cost probably around 60, 70 bucks uh, for everything with the false bottom, uh, the ball valve, and yeah, it works, works great. Um, Next year, um, so this is what I use just for like Vorloffing and anything else I need to use this for. Uh, strainer definitely comes in handy. Auto siphon, really handy. Use it really simple to use, works great. Uh, as far as sanitizer, uh, I've been using Star Sand, so almost done with the first bottle. Uh, pretty sure I'll stick with this, uh, seems to work great. Uh, for gravity reads, uh, I just got just your basic uh, hydrometer and a beaker. All right, as far as chilling down the wart, uh, I just went with the submersion wart chiller. Uh, I got the adapter, hook it right up to my sink. Um, I could have got the bigger one, which was twice as expensive. This one seems to do just fine. Uh, it probably takes me about 40 minutes to an hour, uh, depending on the outside temp, uh, to chill the wort down. Uh, for primary fermenter, uh, I got this 8 gallon bucket, which works great. It's got the temperature indicator on it, uh, airlock, uh, works good. Easy to clean with the big lid. Uh, temperature, I just picked this up today. Actually, haven't used it yet. Uh, I got a nice digital thermometer. Uh, I had the just the normal dial thermometer, and uh, wasn't wasn't my cup of tea, I guess. Uh, also, brew a brew journal. Um, this is pretty handy. I've only done two batches so far. Uh, doing my third batch today. Uh, this is really handy though. Put in all ingredients. Um, you can document all your different temps all your gravities, you can put some tasting notes in there and stuff as well. Uh, really handy for going back through and even just seeing, you know, when you started fermentation, when you transferred to secondary, what day you bottled on, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I'd highly recommend doing that. Um, I did do my first batch stovetop um, of gas burners. However, it did take a long time to heat the wort up to boiling temp. I had bolt burners on, full blast, and it took probably a solid hour just to get it up to boil. Uh, then you still have your whole hour boil, so it was quite a long process. Um, I recently upgraded to a propane burner. I have that on the deck, which is way better, highly recommended. Also keeps the temp down in your apartment, um, so that's also a plus. Um, other than that, uh, I think that's about it. So I just got everything out, uh, got it all cleaned up, and am ready to start a brew day here. So with that, cheers.